Uh, greetings traders, this is Houston Trung from thetradingedge.org and here is your weekly market outlook for March the 1st to the 5th, 2021. And so we managed to escape the month of February uh, with a green month on for most equities. Even though it got harrowing this past week as bonds, the movement in bonds drove the indices lower. So we'll talk about that as we recap things in a few moments here. Um, but let's talk about the upcoming week. Um, we still got you know lots of earnings announcements out there. So uh, I'm not going to go into the earnings. Uh, you can do that for yourself by going to your favorite sites to figure out which uh, companies are reporting. But certainly keep your eye on that as there's plenty of names still reporting. So we can expect some movement around the earnings names. And at the same time, Econ, econ calendar, so nothing too unusual. We've got the same uh, um, things to be watching out for, especially the jobless claims number. That, for me, continues to be the one to watch. And that jobless claims number does a really, really good job at you know creating a a, um, a, a, a catalyst for the markets to move on. You know, this past week, jobless claims came in rather weak. You'd think that actually would be good news for the markets. Um, they came in, you know, people were expecting 800,000 plus. It came in under 800,000. So you'd think that that's actually good news. You would expect that, right? Uh, that the markets would react well. Well, the problem is that, you know, the Fed is hell bent on continuing to to, uh, to pump the markets. But then, you know, if the jobless claims are going down, they're having, you know, less and less uh, hard data to support or to justify their continued market operations. So, you know, folks are beginning to now, are, you know, wonder and they're starting to, you know, begin to price in if and when the feds are going to have to start raising rates. People are now all, all worried about a potential commodity super cycle, inflation, hyperinflation, yada, yada, yada. So it certainly came to a head this week as the increased sell-off in bonds, bonds, which again, again means a higher uh, higher yields, so that yield curve is actually spreading out um, between the uh, short curve and the longer curve, and this is causing a quick repricing in equities specifically. So, in a you know a higher inflation or higher excuse me interest rate environment, then these growth stocks don't have the same amount of working capital, and that's what we saw this past week. The last actually the last couple of weeks, as the bond prices have been going down, we've seen tech get hit very heavy. So let's get in the charts now. You know this is going to explain things very very clearly. We've, we've been all over that TLT trade, so we'll we'll get on top of that first. We'll cut, tackle that first, and then we'll show you the reaction in the stock market so you know we've been calling you know pointing this out for a while now that we had a reversal on the bonds a while back this is the three month chart and so what's significant here is that you know we've, this is a, a broad information that we've drawn in for a long time right this has been in for man how long have we been doing these videos for a couple of years now it's more than that um we drew this you know way back and we can see now when, once you broke above that broad information we said it has to keep going otherwise it's going to come back uh, if it comes back in, it can come back through again. And so we had that situation here where it went inside bar up and looked like it was going to get a continuation until, you know, not this quarter, but last quarter, we had a reversal. Inside bar up, inside bar reversal downside. And it started to play out, but very, very slowly, right? It was one of those trades where, you know, personally, I do not trade bonds because you can't get, uh, I don't trade bond features, so it's not worth trading the um, uh, the ETF because it moves so slow and the beta is, is so small that it's just a, a sleeper of a trade. Um, so you're better off, you know, uh, chasing beta elsewhere. Um, or alpha elsewhere but here inside bar up reversal and we saw that also happening on the monthly chart right here right outside inside and down and it's been gone since this is here right October so it's been just a slow bleed until the past couple of months right so this month it really finally started to drive downwards once this happened right we, we saw this inside month and down and look that inside month sits right on top of that broad information, so we had some 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 sellers and some buyers who tried to you know break it lower, but they found that stalemate in the in the month of December, right on that broad information, and you know went inside bar down, and uh, with full time from alignment, right? So here that that blue line, as you know if you're watching these videos, is your quarterly open, and so you know this trade was available to be short for a long time. People just now piled into it. As you see, if you look at the short interest in the, um, the bond products, they've kind of shot up the last couple of weeks. Um, but this trade was available to take for a long period of time if you wanted to trade in this product. So you know TLT may have gotten a little overdone now because uh, um, 
you know, we really, this week, you know, it really spiked down. It's very unusual for, for bonds to have that big of a move. Usually after that, it takes some time to, uh, to, um, um, to basically consolidate and, uh, and backfill. So we saw that m quick move to the downside this past week. We left the week with a big hammer. So now we have a hammer on the TLT product. So we'll not, you know, be surprised to see a bit of backfilling here as a price may have gotten a bit ahead of itself. If you recall, a few weeks ago we pointed it out, we had the inside buy reversal right there, right? Right off of the monthly open, right? So that's an inside bar up to close the month of January. You got full time from alignment here if you break below that low. Inside bar up, down, inside bar reversal right there. You could add, you know, one, two, three, four weeks into that trade before it really breaks down here this past week. This past week was probably a good week to cover if you were in TLT as a short. There's no reason to be long TLT back here. Here now, you, you know, you can try to play that uh, upside surge if there is a break above this here, uh, bar down, bar up kind of reversal. Um, but for now, we can watch this, right? Just look at that range. It's a big range. That's unusually large for TLT, right? That usually doesn't move in such, oh, okay, there we go. It doesn't move in such a big um, ranges. That's usually a pretty, you know, boring, um, um, boring product, boring asset class. And that's the whole point, <laughs> right? You don't want bonds because most people are, you know, again, they usually go into bonds for safety. You do not want bonds making large moves because that when, when you do see large moves in bonds, that means there's some big displacements going on. And um, that's what got the market worried this past week is that, you know, usually when you have these huge ranges and bonds, there's something up, right? And so when you have a slow bleed, it's okay. But when it starts to really increase in range, that's when market participants are market, market participants um, believe or see that the market's signaling something and that people start to rearrange their portfolios. So we saw that move this week now and on the daily chart, it looked like that, right? So the daily, essentially what we left with is, um, and maybe I'll show you this because this is a, on the TLT we had right here, right? So that break was right there. It's just a, a breakdown and on Thursday, we had a basically, it opened up there. No, opened up there, closed down here. Big hammer, kind of a hammer there. And on Friday, people are doing short covering here as they squeeze them back. And look, that weekly open, that purple line is a weekly open, came as resistance to the end of the day. And they closed right, right now, right above that weekly open to make it a green week uh, and to create that hammer on the week. But it could not break much higher than that. So we leave the week as a green week with a big, big tail to enter into the fight next week. So this is basically what I call a, a momentum hammer on TLT. So if you look at uh, here, that's what I would call a momentum hammer, right? It's, it's momentum on the upside. You get a break above there. Like I said, it's a reversal back to the upside again. But they're still not full time from alignment. You can take it, you know. It's again, it's a, uh, it's really big risk to take it here because such a wide bar, and you still have the quarterly open right up there. We have a new month coming around the corner, so, so I'll talk about this in a, you know, for a quick second here. Is anytime you get a new month, you definitely want to be checking out when you know uh, where price is trading in relation to that monthly open, the monthly. The quarterly, the weekly opening levels are all significant, and we've seen in the past, and you see continually as I do these videos, how important those levels are. So you want to be seeing what, how is price transacting relative to those opens, right? Weekly, monthly open. Since we have new coming up, new month coming up here, you want to see here right away is TLT trading above or below that weekly, monthly open. If it trades above it, you're going to have a bit of mixed time frame conflict because you have a higher time frame still going to be red, the quarterly. But at the same time, you know, you're going to have the weekly, monthly in your favor if, it turns, if it's green and you may get a bit of short covering here as the guys here may have been too extended to the downside. So if it does break to the upside, it's going to become momentum because of this, right? It's called the momentum hammer already in the weekly chart. And if you do break above there, look, we also have a, an outside bar on the two-day chart. So if we go outside bar up, that's a Momo move, right? Immediately we call it Momo up. And so you want to see how far that Momo move takes the TLT product. Um, personally, I think it's, you know bonds are probably going to pop up a little bit, do a little bit of a, a short covering, as mentioned already. And this will ease the pressure, some of that selling pressure we've seen on the uh, indices as the indices looked a bit shaky this past week, especially the uh, the Nasdaq heavy, uh, the Nasdaq heavy Qs, or the uh, sorry, the technology heavy Qs and Nasdaq stocks, they got really hammered. Uh, but we did see some buying in some some uh, Nasdaq names at the close of the week. So that's uh, TLT. That's today. I'm you know, leading with that because that was kind of the story of the week. Now let's get into our usual assets here, our usual instruments, and look at VIX next. So here's the VXX, right? And so 
Uh, VXX gave a really interesting pattern this past weekend. It was really fascinating to watch it play out. If you understand price action, you'll you know you, you can see how it was playing out and uh, and where the major uh, inflection points were. So first and foremost, VIX still in a protracted downtrend. If you don't know, think it's in a protract protracted downtrend, then you can see here, as you've been pointing out for quarters now, <laughs> months uh, uh, months ago, it's outside, inside, and down on the. Uh, on that quarterly chart and it just looks like it's slowly melting and eventually going to hit that 1315 area again markets never move in a straight line so you expect a lot of, of you know uh, of uh, of backfilling so it's sort of those two steps forward or depends which way you're going two two steps down one step back up again but the trend continues to be the downside on the vix no reason to believe that we're not going to see even more vix decay as you know the government and the fed have no um uh, I don't think they have any inclination of of, of slowing down in terms of their uh, of their um, accommodation for the markets and of uh, and the um, goal to inflate asset prices. So right now we continue to go outside, inside, and down the quarterly, and so now it's Momo down on the uh, monthly. So Momo down, and that 1630 area came into play once again this past week. This area has been significant for a long period of time now. It's been since uh, I'm going to move this out of the way so I can point out back to you here. Since the beginning of uh, of the December area, um, we, we started to hit that 1630 area and it was acting as support. I found this past, actually this past month, it broke below there and it's actually acting as resistance now. We got a new month coming up. So the question is, can it, you know, if, if you're, if you're worried about the VIX, about, you know, the market's selling off, what the VIX has to do here to be really significant is it has to break above February's high. If that happens, then you really need to watch out. So if it goes outside bar down and goes up, that'll extinguish the moment to the downside, and that would be unusual, right? So if you can break above Feb's highs, that would be something to watch for. Um, that would be significant. That's really far away. They're not saying it's impossible because you know we know that VIX can move very aggressively, very quickly. Um, so that's what you want to watch for. That's one of the levels that I'd be watching for. See if I could, that, that could take it out. That's what would be like your final line in the sand to say, you know, um, uh, that's where if you're long equities, you do not want to see that level taken out because then clearly um, there's the volatility is going to pop up. But it, the VIX has a lot of work to do, to, to, a lot of work to do before that happens. Again, it closed the month of February down here, and so you have to come back through this entire range, correct? And then you know take out that take out that high. So a lot of work to do on the VIX for that to happen. This past week, you know, it, it's the VIX does a very good job at scaring people. And so it did this week. It did an outside bar, and I think that scared a lot of a lot of folks. Uh, but I think this has a lot of work to do. So you know, outside bar, inside bar, and down, down, and then did an outside bar this week. That's you know wasn't that difficult to do the outside bar because the range is so tight. Anytime you're going right in the lows like this, it's you know it has to keep going. The problem is that when you're going going to lows like that, there are no more you know like there's no immediate pivots to go after other than that that one down here we talked about already, thirteen fifteen. Um, but there's no immediate shorts down here or longs down here to uh, to stop out, right? So there is no range to go through here. So it's not unusual for things to pop up. Now, if it pops up again, goes outside bar up, maybe it fades back in again, or just goes outside bar down, or goes outside inside, or some variation of the outside inside type of um, uh, type of scenario. Okay. So here is what I was watching for on the VIX uh, daily chart, and so I had this line drawn in. Um, early on in the week, as so this is this is this is my uh, how 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 I was framing things going into the week. So we have this scenario here. We have basically a Momo down situation, right, going into the week. So that was the end of the last week, right? So Momo down down. Now what's some reversal? Momo down reversals when you get that high taken out. Okay, so that happened. Boom on Monday. So right away on Monday you get a Momo down reversal. It was going momentum down. And if that guy gets taken out, you expect that guy to get taken out, that high there. Did it happen? Yes, it happened that subsequent bar right there. Okay, so that happens right there. So immediately once that day closes, look, this is higher than that high. Um, and that's when you can anchor your um, your extended line to create a potential broad information. So that anchors, that higher high anchors to that lower high. Okay, so now we move forward a bit. And it goes Momo down again. All right, so another Momo down move. Now, if that high gets taken out, what's going to happen? 
to come be another Momo down reversal. It happens, boom, on Thursday. Sorry, that's, that's a Friday. Another Momo down reversal, and look what happens there. Sorry, that's a Thursday. Hits the top end of that broad information, and that broad information right now is holding in the price action, correct? And you can also see that that quarterly open, that blue line is also in play, holding price down, and we got the, the, the 1630 area right here in play as well, which, um, you know, it's it, price is, is sitting in there, and we only have one close above it, and then Friday, unable to close back into it again, it looks like a fade. So this is, you know, a typical broad information where you have higher highs, but price keeps coming back in again. And so now, if if sellers can uh, step up, and if the buyers cannot continue to pick up the, you know, to bid up the, bid up the VIX, coming back out through the range again, back out the other side. So that's what I would be looking for for this coming week is, does this broad information continue to play out? And if it doesn't break above the broad information high and keep going this way, it's going to come down through this way. Okay, so that's what you want to look for is, does it break above this broad information for that range expansion, or do you come back in out the other side again, stopping out anyone who got long this past week of VIX? So that's the range you want to look for. Sorry, I'm going to uh, redraw my, my weekly levels here. So the, this week's high and low is going to be significant. It's going to be that's an outside bar. So you know this is your your price action lesson here. So that's your outside bar. So going back to the daily chart here now, you want to see can you break outside of? And this is not drawing in right. So I'm going to draw it back down to there. Okay. All right. And so there's our highs for the week. Can you break outside uh, of that range? If it goes above that high, it's going to be Momo up. On the weekly chart, if it breaks below that range, it's going to be Momo down on the weekly chart, right? So you're going to get Momo up condition, Momo down condition, or somewhere in the middle. One final little um, addition to that. So if this is a you know another way to basically see the same thing, and this is why I'm you know giving you a different looks at things. But here's a two-day chart, just to really you know um, ba uh, I guess bake at home bring it home I mean is here the two-day chart shows you the expansion of the outside bars right so you get the outside bar up now on the two-day chart that's Momo up but as soon as that low gets taken out guess what you come back out through the range again and that's your Momo up reversal short to the downside so we got a nice little brand information playing out here on the on the uh, the VXX across time frames right Again, an outside bar is a broad information on a fractal level, and we're seeing it across a bunch of time frames. You got an outside bar there on the monthly, got an outside bar on the weekly right there this past week. Outside bars in play here on the daily, outside bars in play on the on the two-day chart. This is why you're seeing this kind of tricky action where you know you're getting higher highs and lower lows, and it's tr it's, it's very confusing to people because they don't s actually understand the, the dynamics at play here. And again, the, what you want to be looking for is a break outside of that range condition, right? So this outside bar on the weekly chart, you want to see, does it break to the upside and keep going? If it doesn't, we come back out through the other side again to create more range expansion to the downside. Okay, so I hope that's clear on the on the VXX. I think it was a very, very uh, good illustrative chart this week. Um, so I hope again that uh, that's in-depth um, look at that helps you. So let's take another look at things looking by looking at the SPY. And then, uh, you know, as, as always, we'll do a little bit extra on SPY and then we'll just basically fast forward through the rest of the indices as they predominantly look the same. I'll give you some high level looks at things, but uh, for the most part, uh, even though the, uh, the indices are trading slightly different, the message is essentially the same on, on, on most of them, albeit uh, with different uh, size returns. So the SPY is, you know, we, we end the month of, uh, of February with a big green month. So even though we had a bigger green month to start the month, this is by, by no means a bearish month by, by, you know, by any standard. We still had a good, you know, 2.758% month. And so if you want to see a reversal on the SPY, um, then you, you kind of need to wait and uh, to take out the, this previous month's low. So I'm just going to quickly copy that. That's the range of uh, February. And if you, in order to see a reversal on the monthly chart, that low need to get taken out. So the SPY right now, you know, trading basically uh, well, wherever we open up, we'll probably be inside of the pro of, of February's range. So the question is, can a SPY get out of February's range, and in which direction will that happen? To the downside or to the upside? So for now, we had that else that that you know that Momo up move that we had on SPY. It got extinguished, right? So this week here, it got extinguished when it broke below the prior week's low. So we watched that, uh, but not that much selling. The selling picked up to the downside, but not quite as much as the cues for the reasons I spelt out earlier. 
And so um, we never did get that, that break below the quarterly and monthly open. So the quarterly and the monthly open, you know, they, they basically remain green. The month remain green. The the quarter remains green for the SPY. And the SPY this past week, it did bounce, you know, did find some, a bit of support. Some buyers did step up on that 50-day moving average. As we kind of expected to see some sort of, you know, defense by the buyers. Uh, last time it, it, it tagged that line was down here back in. Man, I'll keep moving these things out of the way so I can see better. Here we go. Uh, back at the end of January, we had that tag of the 50, and that ended up being a nice little uh, local bottom that buyers bid up right away. Um, you know, the last time we touched the 50 was way, way back. Well, it's been a while, right? So that happened back in Jan, and the time before that was when it actually uh, it was below the, the 50 and then popped above it. That's way back in October here. Down here is different, though, because this is what do it was below the Bollinger Bands before it popped up again. So that was deeply uh, stretched to the downside. So on this point here, we also we tagged the Bollinger Bands to the downside um, back in January. Here right now, a bit of an arbitrary location, right? So down here would be a lot more interesting if we had tagged this area here. But here now, you know, this this is a, one of those situations where it's it's not a convincing bottom to me yet. It certainly could, you know, it certainly could happen. The buyers step up and they they bid it up again. Especially, you know, if we're just we're just gonna watch the new month. A new week, a new month, where it opens up, we're at right here, right? Let's say it opens up around here, and then which there, you know, what side of that opening price, the weekly open and the monthly open, does price transact? And then you have, you know, a very very clear line in the sand there to see whether or not you have a green, a uh, green month, a green week, or a red month or a red week. So that's going to be the line we're watching for in the slant in the sand. Okay, so there's your 50 EMA tag, and. Um, Let's look at the queues because that one certainly had had more selling in it, uh, and the queues did end the the month red. So that's a you know a a second month in a row now where the queues did not have a strong close. Uh, we had a real doji happen on uh, on on January. Now February, this actually looks a bit like a shooting star, doesn't it? it certainly does. So it's kind of the mere opposite of um of that hammer that we saw in the TLT weekly chart. So now this is actually significant. If in the month of March we can somehow break below this bar's low. That's a shooting star. That would definitely get some shorts uh, interested, more interested in shorting the queues as, you know, break below there could certainly bring it back to the range here because this is a Momo up move. Momo up, up, up. So that's three consecutive months of higher highs, but they're not closing, uh, like I said, they're not closing green anymore. The last two months have been closing red. We get a break back below there. Yikes, watch out. You can actually come back through this and take out that low there. That's something you need to watch out for is the um, the buyers defend before it breaks below that low because that would be a significant reversal especially since you already have a red quarter okay so the queues certainly this week you know got uh got hit pretty hard um here a minus five percent move this past week and this is what we were looking for right so you had the momo up move and last week it ended the week as an outside bar so the question was like we said last week the outside bar by itself is not time yet to to, to uh, panic Especially if you know if you're trying to ride the trend. If you're trying to ride the trend, you're not going to try to overweight one overweight one bar. Um, you know, you're not trying to overweight one bar, and you're not trying to um, catch the tops. That's you know, ne never my my intention. You know, if, if I was a younger trader, you know, and I was on Twitter a lot, I might try to catch a top and, and, and brag about it on Twitter. But uh, you know, my, my my thesis has always been, you know, I want to try to ride the trend as long as I can. And sometimes, you know, at the, at, the, at the end of the trend, it's okay to lose money. That's how it's supposed to work, right? Uh, that's the market telling you that the, uh, that the regime is changing. When you start to take stops and you, and you start getting out of your longer-term longer, longer -term positions, that's the market way of signaling that, uh, that the trend is beginning to, to fail. So um, th that's, you know, just a choice that you have to make as a trader. You try to call tops and bottoms or do you try to ride trends as long as possible and catch the meat of the move. Um, again, also with the understanding that you're not trying to buy tops and you're not trying to sell bottoms, you're mindful of that as well because you're not trying to just chase price up into highs and sell price as it gets into lows. Those are areas you actually have to be careful about. So it's balancing those 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 two uh, those two ideas on that spectrum is you know not trying to catch tops and bottoms at the same time, not trying to buy highs and sell into lows. So that's a very, very important distinction there. So back to the price action here. Very nice stuff this week. Once we went outside bar down, you gotta watch out because that's a Momo that's a Momo up reversal short. And you have to watch out for that low to get taken out. Why? Because there's your brand information. You can you can already see it, right? Even without that bar, you know that if that thing breaks below, 
right? What's the next what's the next pivot in play? That one. Because this entire move is momentum. We always say the momentum, why, why we always watch the Momo moves is because Momo moves have poor structure by definition because people are chasing, right? Because we, what we know about the outside bars is that it catches people off guard. And then if the move finally starts to work, people have to chase to get into that move. Because if let's say, you know, you were, um, you got long in this, at this bar here, right? Let's say you're long on that green bar and you have a good reason to be long. You believe in the fundamentals or whatever your, you know, rationale is. Then that bar happens and you had put your stop below the low there, right? You're like, okay, I'm glad I got out of that trade because, um, you know, it looks like the low got taken out and I no longer want to be in that trade anymore. Now, what happens when it does that? If you want to get back on the trade again, you have to chase it, right? Like, let's say it pops back up again. Are you going to buy it back above that high? Some people do, and they chase. So now they have poor trade location because you're going into highs. What do you put your stop, right? Down there, over here, way down here somewhere, right? And so you're, for another week, you're doing well. Then all of a sudden, they run out of buyers. Like we saw last week, Momo. And anyone who bought that bar is now underwater. And guess what happens? Momo down. So anyone who bought up here, right? Because you were chasing, you bought back up here again. You immediately underwater. Now you're hoping, please don't take out my stop. Because I put my stop there or there. And guess what happened? Yep, they took them out. So, you know, mark guys who trade momentum, who chase momentum, excuse me, um, can get themselves, uh, especially if they're over leveraged, in uh, trades that have really poor trade location and ultimately that that trade location that poor trade location in mass creates poor market structure so that causes this weakness here and they end up taking out those guys right there at the lows and it pops up again all right so there's your <laughs> another uh, great great uh, lesson on brown informations uh, shown and played out on the queues this past week so on the queues you know the week did end uh, you know did end uh, fairly um, I think it's you know kind of neutral, uh, even though we had a, a red couple of days on on uh, on Thursday Friday. The reality is that the, the sellers were not able to break it any lower. Now, here's something that you know I saw people doing earlier in the week. So, so if you recall, so here on the uh, earlier in the week, um, that purple line, right there, that purple line right there is the prior week's low, right? So early in the week, so here's Monday, here's Tuesday. On Tuesday we broke below that low. We created this here we created a lower low on the week right so this week here is a red week not only is it red but you, you because you pierce through sorry it's not the that week i'm gonna delete that line so on monday when we broke below the prior week's low that, that level right, right there we immediately right on the week so in order for the week to turn green you have to break above that purple line okay so now you have a second day of selling here and on tuesday they, they did bid it up again and a lot of people took this as a perhaps as a um, uh, as a signal to buy because it had a strong green day and looked like a hammer of sorts, right? Here's the issue with buying this this day, okay? And again, it depends on on the duration of your of your trade. But here's the, here's the issue with buying that day. If you buy on Tuesday, you have to believe that this is the low of the week, okay? So. Is this one bar significant enough to to reason that that is your low of the week, right? That's what you have to believe in your head to buy that signal. Do you really think this is going to be the low of the week when this bar happens, right? Is that bar there, you think it's significant enough that it's going to cause you to buy? You might say yes because, well, it's a green bar. It did gap down and it popped up again, did sort of red dog reversal, a lot of volume. All kinds of um, you know you can rationalize it many many ways but here's the countering point the issue though is that no matter you know what you created already by this happening you created a reversal on the weekly chart this is, this is the you know the you know thinking in more than one dimension you're thinking across multiple time frames here once you get that reversal on the weekly chart right no matter what it's going to be a reversal on the weekly chart because you want one th uh, outside bar up and down Okay, the only bit way to basically reverse that reversal and for things that get really bullish again is for this bar somehow turn into an outside bar to the upside. So this would have to be a big green upside bar to take off that high again to reverse the damage that was caused by this uh, uh, outside bar and down move. That would be the only way for that to do that. That is very unlikely. <laughs> right, so you know, the, just a game of probabilities and, and, and chance, or likely, you know, I guess a game of uh, probability and, and uh, likelihoods. 
in terms of events here, but that's what you need to think about. Because here at this point, it's a, d a bar to the downside and, and you're fighting the trend, right? So by going long on the daily chart, you're actually fighting the, the longer term trend at that time. You, if without no, maybe perhaps without realizing it, is that you're actually fighting a downtrend intra-week. And so that happens. You can have small pops to the upside intra-week. And so the, you know on Wednesday, people thought, wow, that was a good idea that I bought that that uh, Tuesday bar, wasn't it? Until Thursday and Friday happen. Now you're you're getting really worried that you're not going to get stopped out. Did they get stopped out? Ah, let's see. The low here was, let's say you bought this bar and you put the low, your stop below uh, this bar's low. 3.11 was the low. What's the low on Friday? 3.10.88. So they got stopped out. They got stopped out by 12 cents uh, if you only put your, if you put your stop right at the low of that day. Right, that's inevitably what happens because you, this is not a strong enough reason to get long, in my opinion. Right, especially if you know the weekly chart has already been violated. Sometimes you may get lucky, and this will be the local bottom. Sometimes, right? But that's not that's if you actually do your homework, it's not a high probability. You're actually better off waiting for some sort of reversal on the weekly chart and then getting involved in that versus trying to pick that bottom because literally you're trying to pick a bottom here. Because you're already fighting the weekly signal, right? You know the month. And luckily, the month is, is still green, and the and the uh, and the um, the quarter was green. But at the end of the week, it was no longer that way anymore. Now you're trading red month, and you're trading red quarter, right? So just that again, I'm, I'm kind of harping on this, but I saw a lot of people trying to pick that bottom, um, and I just wanted to take you know explain it one step further by helping you also see that you're fighting time frames, like you're fighting the weekly trend. At that point as this thing has already broken to the downside and anyone who looking who's looking at this chart on the weekly chart alone is going to be a seller right you're going to be a natural seller there uh, or you can see natural sellers come in as that chart is red and it'd be a lot to change that red chart around okay so you're putting just you know these these um situations in your favor to make sure you only get involved in the most in the most um uh, amenable uh of situations so uh, one final thing here. Now, this coming signal here on a Monday could be interesting. So now we have the end of the month, right? So we got a brand new week, brand new month opening here, and this is why I'm harping on it. We got an outside inside to start the week and the month. If we go outside inside and up, that would be significant. That actually would be quite bullish, because you go outside inside and up, even though you have a um, a red quarter. So where is the quarter? Sorry, where is our quarterly chart? Okay, it's not, our line's not there. I think it should be around, right around here somewhere. But um, you still have a red quarter. It should be right around here, right? It should be just the right above, below. Yeah, the quarter is at uh, around 3.15. So the 3.15 area is right around here. If you go outside, inside, and up, you're going to have a green quarter again, a green week, a green month, and then you have full time for alignment, alignment back to the upside again. And so you might see a bit of a bounce if you can get a, uh, a, a positive resolution of that outside, inside pattern. Now, if you go outside, inside, and down, watch out because that would be again full time from alignment to the downside. You're going to be below the quarterly open, below the monthly, below the weekly, and that's when you have to, you know, again, you could see more selling on the queues. So watch out for that condition here um, uh, this coming week, okay, on Monday. Okay, so let's uh, fast forward a bit now. I've gone through quite a few things there on price action on the uh, on the spy and VIX and queues. So spy outside bar. Again, watching to see how this one plays out. Um, the one noticeable thing here, and this is why I hope these videos help, because a lot of people do not understand outside bars, and so they it's very confusing the price action when they start seeing them, and because they don't think that price is responding properly. In fact, it's just price uh, doing its thing, and that is price discovery, and and price discovery often takes the form of outside bars. So the outside bar here, this is what makes trading trading tricky is because it, it's what I would, I would call intra-bar volatility, where it takes out both sides of that range. We do have that situation here now on the weekly chart of the Dow. Which way do you go? You know, Momo, up or down, or inside in some sort of capacity? Here is the nice, is the neat pattern that played out this past week on the uh, on the Dow. We had double outside bar, right? So this is your double outside bar, and, and it went up. So it looked like we are going Momo, Momo to the upside. But that failed, right? So once that move up broke below on Thursday, watch out—you can't start coming back through the range again. As you know, you can kind of see when you connect these uh, outside bars, you can kind of see where these tops are being made here. As sellers are definitely coming in at the uh, ends of these bars, right? As you draw things 
to the upside here, you can see that these these broad informations are kind of holding in price, and uh, and people are fading the uh, the the pops now. So we'll watch out here on the Dow. That should be an interesting pattern to see as we've now you know broken to the downside. This moment move to the upside failed, and now we have the potential to range come back through here now. Once again, watch to see how price transacts uh, versus that weekly monthly open. Okay. So there's your Dow chart. And let's talk about uh, anything significant on Russell. Yeah, Russell, I'll just point this one out. You have the double, uh, I believe the double outside bar on the two-day chart. So that's significant. This is something, you know, I talked about the double outside bar on, on Dow. Well, guess what? We got one on Russell now. Uh, double outside on the Russell. Definitely want to see how that one resolves. Okay, so pay attention to see how that resolves. because so that's quite important. And we also got the Momo down move on the Russell right there. Uh, on Friday, again, if, if buyers step up here, right, and they go mobile down reversal of the upside, that'll be very positive because that'll be full time from line to the upside again. You might see, you know, Russell get back to those highs uh, if that's the case. Okay, so right now mobile down, but if you get a reversal, that'll be with full time from alignment. Emerging markets, I don't know. We didn't get more. I guess the bonds took up most of the uh, the play this week in terms of uh, the news. But yeah, the emerging market markets did not have a strong month whatsoever. So this is actually the weakest month I've seen for emerging markets in quite some time, right? First red month in a while. Right? We haven't had a red month since September. The difference is that the month of September ended as a hammer, right? The buyers actually bought it back. Here they actually came in and they actually sold it. So again, we're at the top end of that broad information. We did hit that all-time high on, on emerging markets uh, earlier in the month. Uh, but then they sold it. So this is actually a, a bit of a concern here on the emerging markets. Again, not a lot of uh, you know a lot of coverage around emerging markets and why we had such a, a weak close here for EEM. But uh, again, if we get that lower low next one uh, next month or in the month of March, that will be a reversal. It uh, will be a reversal on the monthly chart. That'll be significant. And so here, similar to what we saw on the uh, Qs, we're getting close now to taking out that low. All right, so that low there would be your your lower pivot. Um, again, watch your ranges for the month of uh, for the uh, month of March. Okay, so this thing breaks below that low there, that will you know be a reversal on the monthly chart, and we're gonna go for that pivot immediately. There's a quarterly opener right there. Yet again, you wanna watch and see how that thing holds up. Uh, a few more products. We'll do um, uh, gold and we'll do digital gold BTC next, and that'll wrap things up for the week. So gold futures. We've been talking about this thing for a while too, and this thing is a chart that has broken down, right? So surprisingly, I think you know people were expecting gold to to continue to remain strong, especially in the uh, face of this uh, this money printing from the Fed. But it looks like gold is no longer necessarily tied to inflation anymore. The you know if you, the chatter now is that you know gold is more of a play on the real interest rates. So, you know, we had, you know, the, the prices have been telling us this for a while now. And, uh, you know, whether the stories catch up or not is, is, um, is, is not important. But we, you know, we, we, see, we see the price reacting well before the actual stories, the narratives come out. But we knew that gold was acting weak um, inside bar and down on the quarterly. Well, before that, though, you know, that's the final confirmation. We've been watching this steady price action just, you know, go momo. Remember, it was going momo up. It got extinguished there. It ran a steam. Then it went inside, outside, up. It looked like it was going to break to the upside. It ran a steam there. And this past month, it did an inside bar wrestle to the downside. So we knew what was not looking good. And this past, you know, this past uh, uh, month here, when it did a momo up, right? When short, we you know, we get a chance to short here. Momo up to the downside because that's momo up reversal short to the downside. And uh, I actually tried to, to go long here on gold, and that did not work. I uh, just tried me. I tried to pick a bottom, and uh, and clearly once you go one bar to the downside when the week starts going down if you try to you know um buy it during intra week you're trying to pick a bottom right so that's you know that that's what i was trying to do pick a bottom uh, sometimes you know you get paid sometimes you know you just uh, get stuck with a dirty position so uh you know this week i stopped myself out of a, a long gold trade because there's no reason to be in it there was just no reason to be in it so i got myself out of that intra week um because there's nothing showing you on the weekly chart that i was reversing so you know i tried a, a short bottom pick there on a, on a gold product it didn't work out and that was okay you know i i understood the trade i was getting into um again nothing wrong with taking the trade just understand the, the larger context and gold again still fading right still fading lower um and now we had that momo up move right um 
this is the two-day chart, correct? Yeah, Momo up move, and then it went Momo up, reversal short, stopping anyone who tried to go go long, so that was, that was me included, and uh, that's why you do not want to be involved uh, in gold at this point to the long side. Again, again, you know, it's significant now because gold had a really outstanding run, all right? Um, going all the way back since it broke out of that long period of consolidation uh, back here in uh, April of 2019. That's basically Q2 of 2019. This major move it was a Momo up move, finally got extinguished this past quarter, right? So that's significant uh, gold here, uh, you know, having the worst run it's had in quite some time. Like that is a pretty big down bar, down six and a half percent. You know, I think you have to go back a ways. Um, that was a five and a half, five and a quarter percent move back in uh, November. But uh, yeah, we haven't had that strong move down the, uh, in gold since in here, right? So you have to look back in this area here, November 2016, where it had a 7.79% move to the downside. Um, so yeah, people getting out of their gold. And you know, so gold's not working for a number of reasons. Number one, you know, people are saying it's, it's tracking real interest rates. Number two, I just think that, you know, there's also other asset classes which are becoming attractive. So clearly, Bitcoin is becoming, you know, a uh, for some people, anyways, a a, um, a replacement for gold. This is why I've been calling it digital gold for a while now. That's the the, the narrative people are t have been taking with, with Bitcoin. It's becoming more and more popular. And the fact is that you know this is a game of faith in many ways. This asset class and uh, people are starting, starting to buy into it. And so you know people are chasing a price. Why own gold when something you know when it's going when it's not doing anything? Uh, where you try to return get a return on Bitcoin and it seems to be you know the, that seems to be where all the positive stories are coming out of so Bitcoin continues to be, continues to be strong look in the month of March even though you had that bit of a sell-off listen still up 42% for the month of February right so I said March February it's still up 42% um, and all that selling that we saw that took it down from uh, 58,000 now we're at 47,000 and change uh, it's still a big strong green month so in order to, to really get worried you need to break below this past months low okay so that would be a reversal on that monthly chart until that happens everything else is intra intra bar volatility okay that's intra bar volatility the trend is to the upside if you look at the monthly chart weekly chart certainly we got that reversal we were looking for the reversal here to see how far we take things and right now the buyers bought it back up so you have that reversal but you're back inside the prior weeks range uh, a lot of nothing burger happening right now as they're sitting inside the prior week's range. So all that reversal stuff happened right basically at the beginning of the week. So here's your Momo up. See how, how we've talked about this many times already you know, in this video, but that outside bar and understanding that outside bar move is so important because you understand, understand the nature of that market structure. Outside bar up, up, look, a break below there, rip right through them again. Okay, so all this is poor market structure, poor for the guys who are going long, <laughs> not so poor for the guys who are showing to the downside. And it goes outside bar up, and they rip them right through again. They stop at everyone who got involved in that little price bump to the upside, because these guys are chasing, right? There, I guess everyone, you know, they're chasing up here, right back down, and now we're getting a bit of of uh, uh, of consolidation now as we're sitting in the prior week's range. Okay, so here we got a potential Momo down, up reversal. So Momo down, uh, reversal to the long side. If that happens, uh, not today, but uh, maybe at the beginning of the week. Then we could have full time from alignment. So ideally, if I, if I actually I might take the signal, if it goes Momo down up uh, on Sunday night, let's say this this uh, remains an inside bar, if we can somehow do a Momo uh, down reversal to the upside, I'll probably take that signal um, either on the daily chart or on a lower time frame chart to try to uh, squeeze some extra uh, juice out of that out of that setup. So Momo down potential Momo down reversal here right here setting up on the daily. Would rather again wait for the new week to happen so I don't have this red week in my face rather have this weekly open down here somewhere and then you'll have a, perhaps a green week a green month to support a potential reversal signal back to the upside again um that's your bitcoin chart i'm going to show one final chart you know just to show you that i think we're still far from the um uh, from the top on cryptos because this is the shit perp um instrument that i talked about last week week before that this is again the uh a uh, index or a perpetual contract futures contract that tracks the you know the uh, the lowliest of the uh, crypto coins so basically all these altcoins that are that are um, small cap essentially and this thing is going momo up okay so that's momo up on the monthly chart this thing's flying in order for this thing to get reversed you gotta have that low violated okay so it's momo up condition yes people are chasing they are definitely chasing there that is a chasing move. 
but you're not going to see a reversal until that low gets taken out. And you're really far away. So this is an 82% move here uh, for the month of February. You'd have to see it come right back out there again, out the other side for that thing to get extinguished. So you got some some uh, some people still chasing. And for all that carnage that happened intra week, you know, you're down 18%, which is not much in the crypto world. Um, so we had a Momo up move here for multiple weeks that got extinguished this past week again. But you can see that you're kind of setting up for the same sort of uh, reversal again on the. Uh, altcoin products that we saw in Bitcoin potential inside bar reversal to the upside again uh, with potential full time frame alignment. Okay, so covered a lot of stuff this week, talked about all the instruments we usually cover um, and gave you a bit of a, um, uh, some insights into how I frame up those outside bars and that price action. Hope it helped. Um, if, as always, if you have any questions, drop me a line um, on the blog at thetradingedge.org or uh, you can feel free to leave me some comments in YouTube. I'm always checking them to see if we have any questions on that platform. Otherwise, have yourself a great trading week. Trade safe uh, amidst this, uh, even though the VIX is <laughs> going in on loads, it feels like things are more volatile. Uh, but continue to, again, uh, trade safe, and uh, I wish you a, a good trading week. All the best. Happy trading.